problem with the budget lenses most of the times is regarding their autofocus performance. So I paid a lot of attention to test how good the autofocus for this TT Artisan lens is. It's one of the cheapest autofocus lenses out there, costing just around $150. This one particularly is with a rather popular focal length, the 35mm f1.8, and it's made for APS-C cameras like the Sony a6000, which I used for these test shots while strolling the city streets and essentially gives you around something like a 50mm focal length. Perfect for portraits, street photography, product photos, and just generally great all around focal length. But is this particular lens usable? Guys, let's find out. Build quality of this thing is pretty decent. It seems it seems fully metallic and I'm saying seems like because this is a pre-production lens that TT Artisan sent me for testing and I'm not getting paid to review it so honest thoughts goes into making this video but I also don't have a full fact list just yet so check the official link in the description because at this point I might be missing some details or the most accurate price for example. Nevertheless I don't need a fact sheet to see that the front element is 52 millimeters uh, so in case you want to put a filter thread on on top of that and it has like this very weirdly shaped lens hood it seems like it's fully metallic as well and it only weighs 200 grams I mean the the, the lens itself <laughs> not the hood and um, yeah it doesn't have any features on the lens like switches or aperture ring it has a focus ring at this price point we should be pretty happy that we have a focus ring and it also turns <laughs> and rather smoothly actually it has a nice resistance and you know i also like the material used for this it also seems metallic and it's like a nice big grip to to just grab on um, so yeah all in all in general it, it just feels nice in hand doesn't feel cheap and you know it fits well on the sony a6000 as well interestingly tt artisan has implemented the usb-c port for firmware updates in the rear lens cap which has these little pins that connect to the lens the only problem is that it is quite flimsy I, I can't seem to put it on easily or you have to use a lot of force before I express my frustration with the autofocus let's take a look at the image quality first thing you will notice when taking the photos on a sunny day is the unbelievable amount of lens flare just look at these photos it gets even worse when you shoot vertically perhaps something to do with that lens hood and it doesn't matter if you stop down to f 5.6 or more basically the same thing unless you want that kind of artistic look forget about shooting portraits with the backlight it's in my opinion it's just way too much uh, speaking of portraits i did try to shoot some in a controlled environment some photos came out okay but it was very very hard to get decent ones due to the autofocus about that in a bit vignetting is also pretty dominant and doesn't get too much better as you stop down but honestly i don't think it's a big problem it's an easy fix in lightroom nowadays sharpness in the center pretty good well-defined details some photos did not come out too clean like this one for example not sure why it is so soft across the image but generally center sharpness was good what i like to do with this lens is to shoot objects close to the lens they stand out so nicely and bokeh is pleasing not too busy again plenty of sharpness or it seems <laughs> corner sharpness no chromatic aberration and fringing some and surprisingly little actually Maybe here a bit in these out of focus areas, some green edge, it seems. Okay, and now to the pain point, the out of focus. Well, friends, perhaps, just perhaps I have a bad copy or maybe the future firmware will fix it, but... Okay, here are a few examples. I tried to do some vignette tests and as soon as I stepped down to something like F6 or F8, the autofocus was just all over the place. 
unable to focus. I tried to focus on this white wall, impossible. Simply did not focus at all. Okay, I understand it's a bit of challenging environment, no subject that stands out, but come on. Here in the bushes, sort of the same thing. A bit better, but a lot of time and uncertainty on where to actually focus. Focusing from close to far was all right. And based on this example, seems like all is good, right? But wait until you actually start taking the photos. This pissed me off most. After each shot, the lens just refocuses and refocuses and refocuses. It doesn't happen when you do a burst, but if I'm in a single shooting mode, it hums for a second every single time. I tried the same test with the Sony a6400 and Sony a7 IV. The results were much better at f1.8, but again, as soon as I stepped down to something like f8, it simply refused to focus. One last thing, autofocus motor noise. I'm not gonna comment, just take a listen yourself. So is this lens worth its $150 price tag? Well, it really depends on your requirements. If you're going to shoot static objects with wide open aperture in the controlled settings, and you want the absolute cheapest lens, it, it, it's a decent lens. If you think of shooting outdoors in a sunny weather, some portraits or just on the go, I think it's a no-go. For me, at least personally, in general, this lens is a no-go. But then again, I remember it's 150 freaking dollars. You cannot expect too much. But if you're curious, then check out the Viltrox 20 millimeter video I just made. It is also a sub $200 lens perhaps you'll have a better picture on what to strive for. Nevertheless, thanks for watching. Leave a comment below with your thoughts about this lens and don't forget to keep on creating.